Hello everybody, um, welcome to your next Allegro Volume 2 tutorial, and this is the most fun tutorial in the world, but it is the most complicated in my opinion. Now, this way for collision is not the best, and I repeat, none of my um, methods are the best um, way to go about it right now, but it, they are easier for what we're going at right now. Um, so, it this one part of the collision code is very complicated. Um, well, to me, at least, I thought it was very complicated. I accidentally did it by, I did it by accident. I figured it out how to do it by accident. Because I was trying to do something else to try and make it easier on you guys. But I accidentally came up with this, and I just decided to go with this. So, anyways, um, there's some things that you have to note. Uh, include, um, the global.h in your collision header file. Okay? Now in our player, I don't know if I went over this with you, but I'm going to go over it with you again anyways. So, um, I made another function called setPosition. Normally, I did this in the controls part, but I didn't. Um, so now for our controls, make sure you set H direction to 1 when you're moving right, H direction to 2. And if you're not moving, set H direction to 0. All that stuff. And if you press key up and jump is equal to true. Then the velocity plus equals jump speed, which is negative 15. Platform is equal to false because you're jumping in the air. That means um, you're not on a platform or on the ground anymore. And vertical direction is equal to 1. Now look at our set position function. Um, right here, you put if velocity y is greater than or equal to 2. I mean, greater than or equal to 0, sorry. Then vertical direction is equal to 2. I'll explain this later. Okay. And if platform is equal to false, then we activate the gravity. And if it's equal to true, then we deactivate the gravity. And it's velocity y that activates the gravity. So now let's go to our collision.h. And instead of um, trying to retype all this from our platform collision function, then we would just copy that. And we're going to go collision to CPP and paste that and put our braces. So we have that here. Okay, so now we said that if um, we stored all of the values, our ones and our zeros, in um, into a multi-dimensional array, right? But just, but we have to read the contents of the array to find out um, if something's solid or not, and if the player has collided with the solid object. So just like it, we did in map that draw, we use two for loops to 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 read every index of the array and to see and to do whatever we want with it so we're going to put 4 int i is equal to 0 i is let's say map size x and i plus plus so you increment it um by one and one thing if i have to do put collision colon colon okay and for int j is equal to 0 j is at the map size y and j plus plus and that's it so now you're saying what do we do well this is easy we loaded all of them in a multi-dimensional array called call map file okay so all we're gonna do is check to see if the if the number is one because that's what we're um that's if the object is solid so we're gonna say sorry if call map file I J is equal to one and sorry for the mouse being in the way then we're gonna do something so what we're we gonna do we're gonna check if there's no collision at first okay so if there's object is solid we have to check if the player actually hit the solid object right so first we're gonna put if um, X is greater than I times block size plus block size um or make sure you put or y is greater than j times block size plus block size or x2 is less than i times block sorry block size or y2 is less than j times block size And that's it. And in here, we're going to put in as a comment, no collision. And we're going to set platform equal to false. 
and we put the ampersand there because we're changing the value within the function. Now you're asking, what are we doing? Okay, now in our map file, when we drew the rectangles, this is our x1, this is our y, um, yeah, well, yeah, this is our y, oh my bad, this is our y1, um, this is our x2, and this is our y2, okay? So, we're basically saying that if x is the top right, or the top left corner of our square, our player, is greater than the far right corner of the of our platform or our block, whatever, right? Or if y is greater, the top left corner of our square is greater than the bottom of the platform, or if x2 is less than the if our x2 position of our player is less than the x position of the of our platform or the y2 position is less than the y position of our of our platform that means there is absolutely no collision it means it, it is not touching it if none of these sides are touching the block that means there's absolutely no collision okay and i explain it more in depth in my collision tutorials and my volume one tutorials so anyways we have to have an else statement so if there actually is a collision so we have to detect where it collided we have to detect if it collided if the bottom collided if it was a side collision or it was a top collision right so first make sure you put this first because if you don't put this first it won't work properly this is what i'm saying this is why i'm saying it's not the best um reliable way for collision but it is an easier method but this is the hardest part i think for this function so pay attention so if um v direction equals two so if you're falling and sorry and y minus velocity y is less than or equal to j times block size then you will put y is equal to j times block size minus 10 and then y2 is equal to y um y plus 10 and we really should have the width and um the width and height and the parameters but i'm not going to do that right now so it's y plus 10 should be y plus the height and platform is equal to true jump is equal to true and velocity y is equal to zero now you were looking at this and you're like what did he just do what is all this okay um basically when you jump the velocity okay no let's look at the player class okay gravity is set to zero right now but it is going to be set to one okay so imagine that gravity is one okay so when you press up you jump and say velocity y is going to be equal to zero okay so um if you jump then velocity y is going to be uh negative 15 right so then and platform is going to be equal to false after so it comes down to here and saying platform is equal to false so velocity y plus equals gravity so it'll be negative 15 plus equals 1 so velocity y will be equal to negative 14 and then right here we put y plus equals velocity y so that means our sprite will be moving up right or our player will be moving up so when it loops again, it's going to say velocity y plus equals gravity. So velocity y is going to be negative 13. So the sprite is still going to be moving up. When it loops again, it's going to be negative 12. So it's still going to move up. And negative 11, still going to be moving up and so on and so forth. Until velocity y is equal to 0, right? And when velocity y is equal to 0, that's why I have this. That means it's not no longer going up. It's going to start falling down now. So that's why I set v direction equal to 2. So when it starts going down, um, it's going to be like velocity y is going to be equal to 0. Then it's going to be equal to 1 next time. So y plus equals 1 is going to start going down the screen and so on and so forth, right? And then you're going to have a downward movement. So let's go to our collision.cpp. So we're basically saying if y minus velocity y is less than or equal to j times block size, then there's a collision with the bottom, right, of the player. And that means you just um that means they're on top of the platform, right? So um so imagine that you have uh the platform the 
the top the Y position of the platform is 40 okay at position 40 and the players at position 50 okay so when you jump you're gonna be way above the block right because Y minus 14 minus 13 minus 12 minus 11 and so on is gonna make you jump pretty high right much higher than the block so then when you come down okay um it it becomes positive so when you when you hit the when you hit the top of the actual platform so when you hit the platform at when y is equal to 40 when there's a collision it's gonna say 40 minus whatever the velocity y is and at that point it will be positive so velocity y is say equal to 10 at that point 40 minus 30 is equal to I mean 40 minus 10 is equal to 30 right which is actually less than j times block size that means the bottom must have hit the the bottom of the plane must have hit the platform meaning that you have a bottom collision that I know that does not make a lot of sense now there are a lot of problems with this but you will not really run into the problems the reason why a lot of the problems are avoided is because of the way we do gravity your sprite or your player will be moving down so fast that you will rarely see a glitch with it right so there are glitches where like if you were falling down and you would hit the, the side wall it would glitch and it would make your player on top of the platform because that would happen sometimes but your player moves down so fast that that will happen that like the chance of that happening is like 0.1 percent like it will probably never happen and if it does then your computer is either super slow or just like a fluke or whatever, right? So anyways, that's for the bottom collision and that was the hardest part of it. So let me check how much time I have. Oh, I'm way over right now. So I'm going to post this and we're going to do the rest of this class. And we were going to see our game with full-fledged collision in the next tutorial. So be ready for that. So thanks for watching this right now. Hope you enjoyed it and get ready for the next tutorial. So thanks.